My guest today is Darren Shaw. Darren is a local SEO rock star. It's hard to find a roundup post about local SEO where he isn't a contributor. He oversees the local search ranking factor survey, must read in local SEO. Darren's also the founder of WhiteSpark, a really awesome company offering local search software and services. Search Live uses a lot of WhiteSpark tools, which I'm happy to disclose because I think WhiteSpark is great. The timing of Darren's appearance coincided with WhiteSpark's announcement that they were relaunching their new local citation finder tool. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about the tool itself and more time talking about citations. He joined me for a beer to talk about a variety of topics in local SEO and to try out his new green screen. Darren Shaw, welcome to Southern Search. Thanks for doing this. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. I'm looking forward to drinking beer with you and talking about search. <laughs> Apparently from a Tim Hortons, so. Yes, I thought I would uh, just broadcast from local Tim Hortons here. <laughs> yeah. looks, looks delicious. So uh, I think you've got a local beer in hand, is that right? I do, yes. So uh, I got well, myself one of these uh, Bent Stick. This is a uh, local Edmonton brewery. So Bent Stick Spiced Belgian Style Wheat Ale. Had, I had yeah, it before. Exactly. And this is actually really nice because in quarantine, um, we get our groceries delivered by spud.ca, which is a local kind of grocery delivery service here. And they started doing alcohol from local microbreweries and wineries and, and local uh, liquor stores. So it's nice to be able to get this stuff now. That's awesome. And yeah. I, I, I can tell from the can. It's a nice looking can. That's a serious beer. They're it's a serious beer. Yeah. I think it's just like two guys in their basement. Maybe I don't know how serious the operation yeah. is, but um, it's good beer. They do a good job. I'm, I'm having a beguile blonde. I think you can see my glass. That's uh, a yeah. brewery right outside the back of our office at search lab. So if I walk out my back door, I run into their brewery and their friends yep. are good people. And yep. this is a good one. So uh, nice. cheers, Darren. Thanks so much cheers. for being and do we just like tap the... Yeah, I think that works. <laughs> there we go. So this is, a, this is good timing. It's May of 2020. It's not good timing for everything, but it's good timing to talk to you about citations. Yeah, sure. I, I, know, just, I know about that. <laughs> you guys just came out with a new, uh, new tool. Or, uh, it's the same tool. It's been updated, redesigned, enhanced. Um, yeah. Yeah, the local citation finder is kind of like this tool that we built in 2010, 11. And uh, it, you know, it saw, it saw some improvements over the years, but it's been sorely neglected for a long time. And so we've put a whole new design on it, a whole new, like we rebuilt it from scratch. It provides a lot more value now. So uh, I'm, I'm so happy with the new version. It's so much better. It's, it's like when I would look at the old version, it was just like, no, can't look at it. <laughs> I would, I would do the Drake no to, <laughs> to the old local citation finder, but now, now I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's a great, a great piece of software. Well, congratulations. We're using it. I'm a big fan of everything from White Spark great. and thank and you. General. So, uh, yeah. you know, keep up the good work. I want to ask you, I think citations are misunderstood in every yep. different direction. I've had people who even know a lot about search, maybe they're in paid search or they're just traditional SEOs who think of local SEO as all it is is building citations. Yep, there's that, there's that angle. Some people- I've had people who think that this is no longer even valuable. And the yep. truth I think is somewhere in the middle. Uh, you know, what, what sort of benefits do you think in 2020 people get from having accurate citations and what risks do you have from inaccurate citations? Yeah, so I'm, I'm totally with you there. I see people going 100% the wrong direction on both sides. Um, so I think there's a few decent use cases. So for example, the, we often see people saying that Google keeps changing their data on their listing. It's like, oh, they keep changing our category or they keep uh, updating our phone number. And it's like, it's so annoying. Why does Google keep doing right. that? And it's because you've got the, what you've got in your Google listing doesn't match what's out there in the local search ecosystem. So if most of your business listings out there have the wrong phone number, Google will use that to be like, well, I know you said your phone number is this, but uh, all sources are, are telling me otherwise. And so it does become valuable to do a citation cleanup and see where that's coming from. That's a use case that's common today, comes up all the time. And so um, that, that's uh, one example where having accurate citations is important. Um, I think people definitely take citation consistency way too far. So, yeah. you know, you want to update 
relatively known major sources, but if you have a wrong phone number on to find local or myhuckleberry.com, that is not gonna have a negative impact on your local search. So, so many people are obsessed with it. They're like, oh my God, my phone number's wrong on this site that no one has visited since 2007. And so that's not something you need to worry about. You should just get your citations cleaned up on maybe the most important sites. So we have a list of what we consider like the 11 kind of core sites, which includes the data aggregators, the major search platforms like Google, Bing, Apple Maps, um, uh, Yelp, Facebook, getting your citations sorted on there so that those ones have the accurate information is important from two perspectives. One, I think it, it is important from the Google just knowing your data. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's also important because those sites are actually visited by real humans and they should be calling the right phone number or getting right. driving directions to the right place. And so Apple Maps is a great example of that. Like you want to make sure your information is correct on that for humans more than from like a a ranking and Google perspective, right? You just want to make sure that your data is accurate there. So that's the biggest use case for that. But even though we have a huge package on our site, the comprehensive audit and cleanup, where we, we will fix your listings on my Huckleberry, it's, I, I don't think most people need to do that. <laughs> my Huckleberry is a good example. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if that site's still around. But it's my favorite uh, funny uh, citation site name. <laughs> I like it. So you, I think one of the things that would be worth talking about is why the confusion exists. And you said you started the citation tool in 2010. Yeah. That's, that's about, I mean, is that about the local SEO isn't that old and yeah. you've probably been in it from about the beginning and the story of citations changes throughout that whole 10 year period. Right. And so there was a time when citations were really started to move the needle. Yeah. What, what has replaced citations, um, in terms of being the most important ranking factors in your opinion? Well, in terms of the most important local search ranking factors, I'm pro I'm gonna lean towards your website and links, like what you're doing on your site in terms of content and, and the authority you've built up through links. Those tend to drive uh, local pack rankings more than anything else. Um, a real close contender there would be reviews, reviews as well. Reviews, right. Yeah. yeah. So, those three things, you dial those three things in, you're good. But you should still lay a basic foundation of citations, especially with a brand yeah. new business. Just get listed on the most important sites. The thing about citations is that it's like this one-time thing that you just do. Right. Get listed on a handful of sites, establish a like, hey, Google, this is a real business, and you, can, you, you have third-party sources to verify that. And then once you're there, you're pretty much done. You, know? you, you don't have to mess with citations anymore. Yeah, and I think there's a, we, we talk about local SEO a lot, and we, I, I tend to think of like a very competitive vertical, like a, a personal injury attorney or something like that. Yeah. A lot of people who, who may listen to this, they're just, they just need, they're the only game in town. They're a, I don't know, podiatrist in, in the right. middle of nowhere, and yeah. there, there's no one else. Just taking care of these things is good business as well as is helping you rank well, I think. And oftentimes it can be enough, right? So if you're like a podiatrist in a small town of 5,000 people, then, and you're the only podiatrist, just do some basic citation building, uh, yeah. create a basic website. Gosh, you could even use the GMB free website that comes in your GMB account. Yep. Um, and get some reviews. You're golden, yeah. you're, you're ranking, right? Your personal injury attorney in Chicago, you're gonna have to do a lot more. Gonna have to do a lot more. Might have to look into Huckleberry. Yeah, uh, Huckleberry. <laughs> so, uh, so you have this other tool that I love. I just love the name of it. It's the the Yex replacement service. Yeah. And um, maybe worth maybe worth saying like why why do we have to? What, what's wrong with Yex? Why does it need to be replaced? It's it's not. I don't think common knowledge always. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So look. Let's carefully discuss that. Um, so first of all, it's not a tool, it's a service. So uh, our, human team, our human team will go and, uh, and do the work. And so this, this kind of spawned from this concept. And so WhiteSpark has always been taking the once and done approach to citations. Uh, it's like, you know, get them all cleaned up, get listed on you know the top 50 sites and then check that off your to-do list and move on to other higher value tactics and local search um yext is a 
a service that you pay recurring fees for. And so really the big difference is like recurring fees versus not recurring fees. And another big difference is automated versus manual. So with an automated service, if I run the Yex scan, I'll, you know, it'll tell me, okay, these are the places where you have incorrect listings. We found a couple of duplicates. I mean, actually hardly even reports any duplicates. But then if we do our manual audit, we find like, oh, well, here's 70 more listings that Yex automated system didn't even catch. They're duplicates, they're incorrect citations. So when you have a human actually go through and find all this stuff, you're getting a much better cleanup and you just have to do it once. You don't have to keep paying Yex four ninety nine a year for a service. Mm -hmm. Now, I will preface that, that there is an, a very good use case for Yext. And I think okay. that if, if you are a multi-location business, you've got like a hundred plus locations, and then every month you've got locations opening and closing and changing their hours, and you need that ability to push a, an update on a regular basis, I think Yext makes great sense for you. And so on the enterprise side, and also we can't even compete with that. If you come to us with a uh, thousand locations, we'll say, well, that sounds like a great project, but it's going to take us about three years to work through that many locations. So uh, right. it's okay if we update your hours in three years from now. So I think that people, uh, and th there is definitely a case for Yex, and it's, it's yeah. at the enterprise end. Anyone with 500 plus locations that has that much kind of change happening, need to push regular updates. Yex is the only game in town. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. I think Moz Local is a, is a pretty good game too because Moz Local uh, will push to the, those primary places kind of in that quick way too. Like any of the primary places that have uh, visibility like Google, Bing, Apple Maps. So I think Moz Local is, is another great alternative there as well. So there's a use case there, but otherwise, you don't really need that. And that, the Yex replacement service is like, if you're currently, if you've been paying Yex for five years for something that you're not actually using, you can come to us, we're gonna do a good cleanup. You're gonna just pay once and we're gonna get, we, another thing is ownership, right? So mm -hmm. with Yex, the listings are kind of owned by them. If you cancel, some of them will disappear. With us, we go and manually create all those. We give you the usernames and passwords, you get a report with all that. And it's like, in the future, if you wanna do an update, you could hire us to do a refresh service or you could just have somebody at your company go through and log into each one of those and change the address, right? So yeah. just owning your listings and doing that was them always, manually. There's just so many benefits to just that that approach, I think. Yeah. And that's why we we launched the service. That was always the thing with Yex that was like most offensive to me was that they would, if you canceled at any time, they, some, some amount of your citations would disappear. And that always seemed very bit dishonest to me but yeah uh, I, I can't i can't say for sure exactly what the ratio is it's, it all depends on each publisher so each of those sites yeah. so like my huckleberry might keep the listing that was created by yex but two fine local might drop it so it depends on the sites um what i generally saw is that if you already had a listing on the site and then you, uh, you signed up for Yext, Yext will sync with that listing and now you can push updates to that listing. And then you cancel Yext, now the syncing is gone, but your listing stays. If you didn't have a light listing on that site before, Yext will create one, but then when Yext goes away, your listing goes away too. I think, yeah. I think in general that's how it works, but every site is a little bit different on, on how they handle the unsyncing of Yext. I gotcha. The other, the other tool that I wanna ask you about in your guys, your guys suite is the white spark white spark local rank tracker so okay how yeah. how do you guys track ranking i think it's such a hard thing to do in local we don't even really show rank rank data to clients unless we Good idea, specifically yeah. get asked to because it's, it's it's too hard for people i think it just opens you up to a whole bunch of misunderstandings yeah um what a challenge that must be how do you guys deal with it it's a daily challenge, actually. So like just this morning, I'm having chats with my dev team about troubles with crawling Google. Um, so it's uh, one of the things that we do that's a bit different than other rank trackers is we separate out each of the, we call it engines, right? So you've got your Google organic results. That's the 10 blue links. You've got your local pack results. 
which is the, the three businesses in the local map pack. And then you've got your local finder results, which you get to if you click more places. And then that goes to what we call the local finder, which has like all the local businesses, right? Um, and then we also track maps separately as well, because the results in maps are different than the local finder. So we, uh, we're one of the only ones I think that does that separation. So you can see like, you can, watch, you can watch your, your rankings drop in and out of the pack. You can see in the local finder how close you are to the pack. A lot of rank trackers actually don't do the finder. They, like, they're like, oh, yeah, we do local rankings, but it's only the map pack. So right. if you're in position four plus, you don't know what your local ranking is. And so uh, we built it with that in mind. And then I think a, a lot of times people are sharing our, our visuals. We have a really great chart that shows your aggregate ranking over time. Um, in this really nice uh, chart that people love to share. And it, it really gives a, a visual on things. Like recently, there was uh, the big ranking algorithm sh shakeup in local. And I shared a visual from a campaign that was like totally solid. And then April 23rd hit, and you could see them just going crazy across all of the keywords they were tracking. And so uh, the visual really helps you to get a good understanding. That's Another awesome. thing is like tracking, like some rank trackers, they only track by city. So it's like, yeah, we do local rankings, but they only track by city. In ours, you can track by zip code, and you can also track awesome. by geo coordinate. So you can, you can be as specific as setting the location. So most of our campaigns, you'll put in like your top five, to 10 keywords, and then you add all the locations you want to track that from. So it's really interesting to be able to see, all right, for a personal injury attorney, uh, in the zip code in the north side of the city, I right. rank position eight, but on the south side of the city, I'm ranked position 35. And so, yeah. and you can really get a sense of how you rank around the whole area. And so uh, we enable that. And so that's one of our kind of, um, you know, unique value propositions. That's awesome. And then I think one of the questions we get all the time, I've had this since the beginning of my career, is how do I, if I am located in a suburb, I'm like located in Naperville, but yep. I, I service Chicago. Yep. Um, do I have any chance? Am I, am I finished in, in local if I'm in some, even uh, this, this comes up the most, I would say, in the trades. So I'm a roofer. Yep. I want to try and target sure, all over. Yep. Uh, what chance do I have if I'm not, I think it, pro, this proximity signal is really strong, a little over, overdone for service area businesses, but yep. what, what, what advice can you give those businesses to expand their proximity? Sure. Their reach? So, uh, do you want the spammy, uh, advice or do you want the, uh, within I, Google's guidelines? Advice? I definitely want, I definitely want the spammy advice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, the only way to do it, so if you're in Naperville, you want to rank in Chicago and you're a, roof, you're a roofer, you need to open a second location in yeah. Chicago. And uh, I would advise you to pick a office location that is close to the affluent area that people that need roofing work done. Uh, right. So, and it, if you get a Regis office or a mailboxes, et cetera, or UPS address, you can mostly forget it. Those have a big target on them. Google's trying to shut them down. But it's hard to do it properly. You'd have to get a proper office. And then you are still at significant risk of getting suspended because right. unless it's a staffed office, it like shouldn't technically exist. The guidelines state you're allowed one location per, right? A service area business is allowed one location per um, uh, per state, actually. So you, if wow. you actually service multiple states, you, you are eligible within the guidelines to open up another location. But if you're, if it's in Illinois, you can't open up one in Naperville and one in, um, in Chicago, technically you're not supposed to, unless it's an actual physically staffed office. But if you're hiding the address, you should only have one per state. So it's a very risky tactic. You could open up those locations. So generally I don't advise it. And I have like little hints that Google is trying to solve this problem for service area businesses. So okay. it does seem to me very unfair that if, if you service the whole city, you can only rank in a 10 mile radius around your physical location. If you're a service area business, that doesn't seem right. I think Google's aware of that and they're, they're investigating ways to fix that, which is another reason why I might not recommend trying to spammy, like creating listings in other cities because that could come back to bite you later, right? So yeah. the, the legit approach, which works actually, are what we call city pages. 
So you would go and actually forget about local listings, do your very best, you know, do what you can in your local area. I think Greg just talked about this on this great your own video. Backyard. You did, yeah. In your own backyard, right? Start there. And then that makes perfect sense. You've got to start there. And there's a great opportunity there. If you can rank really well there, you're still getting a ton of leads coming in right from there. So that's going back to like reviews, your website, links, just building up your local authority in your own 10 mile radius is, is a good, good way to start. And then if you want to get outside of that, we do it in the organic results, not in the local pack. And so that would be building city specific pages or neighborhood specific pages that target those terms. And you can drive traffic to those. And so a lot of people will certainly focus on the local pack, but people keep scrolling. And then if they see your page and the organic results beyond the pack, you can definitely drive traffic from that. My favorite example is pringalaw.ca. This is a client we've been working with since I think 2011. And uh, they're areas we serve. So they're a criminal defense attorney. They have one location in Edmonton. but Very competitive, yeah. They'll take to cases from all over Northern Alberta, the whole like mm. province, right? So what we did is we made a city page for each of those big cities. And you don't want to overdo it. You don't want 50 of these pages. Right. And you also don't want to have uh, spun content where it's the exact same content. Right. Just change the, change the name. Don't do that. That's, or, that's a really bad idea or change the location. Mm -hmm. You should have fresh content on each of these pages that talk about your place and you should anchor that content to the local courthouse or the, something local. It's just, it should be fresh to that area. Mm -hmm. And so we did that for 15 different cities and, Honestly, like what, I don't know what the investment was to do that. It was like getting some content written, putting the pages up. It wasn't much. I don't know. In, the, in the end, probably spent $1,000, $1,500 to do those pages. And over the past like eight years, they've made millions and millions of yeah. dollars off of those pages because they're driving leads. People are, they're, they're getting calls. You can actually see it in analytics. You can see how much traffic those pages get. So it's like, you know, that one time investment to build those city pages is so worth it. And so if you are a roofer or a painter focused on your backyard and the local build the city pages to get outside of it. That's our, that's my number one recommendation in that area. That's awesome. And it, so we talked about, uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, some ranking factors and one of the things you brought up was reviews yeah what are what are what's your advice for I get this all the time review generation getting more reviews I think yeah for, in fairness I think there's a little bit too there's not enough talk about looking at the reviews you have and coming up with <laughs> taking advantage of what people are telling sure, you yeah, yeah but, that's a whole, it's no, no <laughs> but I do get qu asked questions a lot about review generation. What, what advice could you give people to get more reviews? Yeah, sure. So there's lots of software solutions out there. Um, I believe you have. I don't one. always I... recommend them. Okay. Because uh, even though we have one, uh, we call it Reputation Builder. Full disclosure, it's a, it's a white labeled version of GatherUp. Agencies, uh, I think GatherUp does an awesome job. And if you're an agency, you can white label their software, make it look like yours and put your logo on it. And I think it's a great value add for your clientele. But what we have found for our direct clients is that many of them, if they have a low enough volume, the absolute best way to secure a review is this process right here. The job is finished. You say to the client, hey, would you be willing to leave us a review online? They say yes, you get the verbal ask. You hand them a card. This is pre-COVID advice, really, but you hand them a card that, that has a short link and a QR code on it. And so people are going to laugh about QR codes because I laughed about them for years. Yeah. They're actually amazing now. So now the damn QR code, if you point <laughs> any phone at it, either an iPhone or a uh, Android, uh, it'll it'll ask, it'll see a QR code, just point your camera at it. It'll see a QR code and say, do you want to go to this URL? And so it makes it so easy now. So QR code on the card, you just tell the person, hey, you just got to point your camera at the little card on this and it'll take you right to our, our Google listing to leave a review. And, uh, and so, and then they'll do it. So oftentimes they'll do it right there. Um, so the card is so helpful. And so your uh, success rate on review generation, when you have the personal ask and that, that make it really easy for them 
is, I don't know, hundred percent better right. than an automated tool. So yeah. that's the best way for you review generation. And then, and then of course a follow up. So if you leave, right. the review doesn't come in, in a few days, you send them an email, be like, Oh, Hey, just want to check in and, and see how your new furnace is going. And if, if you, uh, I just wanted to remind you about that review, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> so the follow up also, also drives a ton of reviews. So that, that there's no better, process than that. And that's actually what we do with all of our GMB management service clients. We really get a review strategy dialed in. That's basically it. And we go even, we even make the cards for them. We print them and we send them to them. So they don't even have to think about it. We just get, we, we make the cards and send them to them. We put their logo on them. And then because it's so valuable, it's like people hire us to do their SEO. Even they're, they're not really even hiring us for SEO. They're hiring us for GMB management, which is right. like, you know, they, it's not really SEO focused. It's more conversion focused, like improve your conversions from GMB. But in the back of every client's mind, they think it's going to help them with SEO. So we want to make sure that we're hitting the touch points that will do that. And so review strategy is a big part of that for us. And so we really make sure to get that review strategy dialed in. And, and that's, that's the best one I know of that, that awesome. personal ask, but I'm not talking too long, but the, if you have uh, a retail operation, you're not going to yep. ask every person manually, but you can right. still drop the cards in the bag as they're walking out, right? So you've got the cards there and you can even mention it to them. Oh, there's a little card in there for leaving us a review. We'd appreciate it. If you are a restaurant, I think restaurants, even though they're not really operating right now, but the uh, that's where the software is absolutely the best approach because okay. gather up has this amazing text back feature which works so yes. well you just put a little temp card on every table in the restaurant and it's like you know send a text to this number and then they reply and then you can start the review process right there that works for dentist offices it's a real hands-off approach so if you right. if, if your business is not comfortable with the personal ask and it doesn't really make sense for your business that's where the automated platforms come in really well and you can either synchronize with your your mailing list you can use that text back approach just you have to have something basically if you don't ask for reviews you're going to skew toward the negative uh, because right. the only people that are going to bother leaving your review are people that had a bad experience if you do ask for a review you're going to drastically skew towards the positive because people when asked feel especially if they had a good experience many of them will, will follow through and so it's so worth it and it's, it has a huge impact on both rankings and even more so i think on conversions because when yeah. people are scanning the results they see all those reviews and they're like your business has three times more reviews than any other you're instantly drawn to look at that business and then read those reviews and those people are selling your business for you they're like talking yeah. about how awesome you are. And so the conversion factor is huge too. It's one of the most important things that every business needs to be focused on, I think. Yeah, our, our mutual friend, Blake Denman, likes to say that yeah. you, you can't outrank a, a shitty reputation, which I, I've borrowed. I think that's a great line. That's a really uh, good line. I love that guy. Yeah. And so I, this is my last, my, my last question before I talk about the, the bathtub gin. At, uh, oh, okay. Right yeah. <laughs> um, so you do all this good stuff. You you build your town pages. You uh, you do your citations. You get your reviews, and you go to you, in, you go into Google and you see a bunch of fishy looking businesses in yep. in the map. And yep. now a significant part of a local SEO's job is being sort of a I think I've heard you describe it as a vigilante a, a vigilante for Google that you have to come and try and help fight spam. Yeah, I feel like that, he was either uh, Ben Fisher or Jason Brown that, that coined the vigilante term. I don't think I said that. They're, they're, they're the two best. Yeah. So, yeah. So there are like, like Ben, I, I had him on the show. All he really, that's not all he does, but one of the biggest things he does yeah. is fight spam all day. Yeah. Well, it's and awesome. It's like a it's free <laughs> ranking. It's free yeah. rankings. You knock out yeah. one of those spammy competitors, and oh yeah, your business, your client's business just went up two spots, right? So yeah. You, when you take them out, it's it's a great way to rank. The only problem is that it's a terrible cat and mouse game because you knock them out, but then they're back two weeks later, and yeah. so it's you, you're it's an endless process. And gosh, if only Google would would help us, please. It's like yeah. it's like that scene from Jerry Maguire with Google. It's like help me help you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just google's the worst yeah yeah well i think it, it is good to have these uh these product experts you've got 
Joy up in Canada and, and Ben yeah. are, 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 at least they're trying to liaison with the SEO community, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. The property experts definitely uh, have a little bit of power to bend Google's ear to some of these things and, and work on them and, and guide them anyways, right, on, on the kind of decisions that they should be making. So it's good, that, good from that perspective. All right. So last thing, if I'm in Seattle, uh, we're hanging out at MozCon or something like that. I'm told I got to go to Bathtub Gin. What is this all about? Greg? Yeah, so Greg introduced me to Bathtub Gin, and okay. uh, it, it had been a tradition at MozCon for years. We would get together, and on a MozCon night, we would go to Bathtub Gin. It's this really awesome speakeasy bar. They have fantastic cocktails, like the best, you know, spirit list. Everything is so good there. And uh, it's just like down this alley, this really, this alley you wouldn't even think there's anything down it other than garbage bins, but uh, there's this tiny little door and you go in there and it's this really uh, quaint bar that you can get really great cocktails at, really great drinks at. Um, but uh, it, it was cooler, like when we first went. Now, <laughs> okay. now I think everybody knows about it. And then so uh, it's, it, it's like, oh, war's got now. It's like a lineup to get in, but yeah, it felt really exclusive at the time. We felt like, oh, yeah, we found the place. Well, Greg found the place, and then he told me about <laughs> it. So it was it was a fun place for us to go and have drinks. And and now look, no Moscon this year. So this I is know, first year, no Moscon. Yeah. So it's a virtual Moscon. Yeah, it's like that that Yogi Berra line where nobody goes there anymore. It's too busy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's still a good place. It's still good. Yeah. And it's a tradition now. And uh, I cannot wait to go with Greg again. It's, it's been too long. Greg, we got to go. <laughs> it sounds like a good, uh, good place as any to pick up this conversation next time. So yeah, thanks so much for good there. Thanks so much for coming on, Darren. I really, um, really appreciate it. And yep. um, enjoy the rest of your day at Tim Hortons. Thank you. Yes. I'm just, uh, it's shut down now. I just I had to actually break <laughs> in to get in here. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. Cheers. I'll see you next time. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks for having me. See ya.